Whether you're invested in the Marvel multiverse or love nonfiction movies, we always admire the beauty of those movies. The image quality, the sharpness, and the vibrance are drooling over. But have you ever wondered, what camera are these shot on? What is Hollywood's camera of choice? Chances are, they are using something from Aerie, whether it's the camera, the lens, and the lighting equipment. Aerie is a century-old camera company, making world-class cameras, lenses, and accessories for filmmaking. Their cameras are so good that Hollywood filmmakers refuse to switch. They refuse to come out of the Aerie ecosystem. So, what's the history behind their success? Where do they come from, and how did they get here? Find out in today's video about the history of Airy. Let's go back in time to 1917 in the city of Munich. August Arnold and Robert Richter had just founded Airy, but they weren't selling masterpieces from the get-go. They started their business selling cinema accessories, light, and printing machines. Soon, they set up a shop in Torkenstrasse. Cinema and filming were already booming for almost 22 years during that time. That's when the founders decided to build an ecosystem around cinema and everything related to filmmaking. They didn't want to limit themselves to just cameras or great cameramen. They got busy turning their vision into reality, working at Munich, improving their equipment, Moving forward to 1924, Airy launched their first ever camera, the Canari 35. The first camera was a success, and following that, they released the Canari Model 2. In 1925, Richter moved to America to sell their equipment and accessories. He was appointed as a camera assistant at Universal Studios, where he saw the large and bulky cameras Hollywood prefers. With this newfound insight, he returned to Munich and received an engineering degree from the Munich Technological University. Combining his newfound understanding and engineering knowledge was how the Airy cameras were designed. Fast forward to 1936, Airy made its first breakthrough with the Airy Flex 35. Technically, that wasn't a production ready model, but rather a prototype. However, they introduced the final product at the Leipzig Fair within a year. What helped this camera stand out was that what you saw on the ground glass was identical to the actual scenario. It also helped filmmakers understand if their shot was in focus or not. The brilliance of this design made it stand out so much that writers had to distinguish between the camera company and the camera itself. Soon, the Second World War began, and the Airy Flex 35 was the camera of choice for combat cameramen. Shortly, this camera gained popularity in New York because of the spinning mirror technology. Unfortunately, during the war, Airy's store in Munich was obliterated. But that didn't become a massive hurdle, as they moved their production department to the Bavarian countryside before the war. Then came 1941 when the second generation of Aeriflex 35 was made. Again, this camera saw success as a handheld camera capable of filming documentaries and movies. In fact, the good, the bad, and the ugly was shot on this camera. Shortly, this camera and its variants gained massive popularity and sold 17,000 units. Around this time, 16mm cameras dominated the TV commercial and documentary scene. So Airy acted quickly and introduced the Airy 16ST to the world. This camera was a direct competitor to Bell and Howell's Filmo. Other variants of the 16ST were the 16M and the 16BL, the latest variant of Airy's first silent camera. Airy soon made its way into Hollywood and earned the praises of many renowned directors as a camera that's well-built for filmmaking. Easy Rider was a movie that skyrocketed the success of Aerie's cameras. Not only that, but that movie was the catalyst behind the new era of filmmaking in Hollywood. Following the movie's success, the company launched 35BL, the first silent 35mm camera from the Aerie. It was unveiled at the 1972 Olympics and came with many new features. It was a camera to push 100 FPS and came in a compact and lightweight build. Later, in 1980, the 35BL came to light, and it was used to shoot many Oscar-winning movies such as Taxi Driver, The Shining, Apocalypse Now, and more. 
their success inspired them to push further and make more revolutions. So, in 1975, they came out with the Flex 16SR. It was a silent 16mm camera with better ergonomics in mind, featuring an ambidextrous design so that everyone could use it, and it was loved. Moving forward to 1995, the Airy Laser was introduced, and it marks the coming of the digital age for Airy. During this time, Airy acquired MovieCam, another competition of the company. Soon, after acquiring the company, the AiriCam ST and LT was released in 2000. Also, during this time, Airy and Zeiss released the Ultra Prime lens, which worked perfectly with the LDS. Fast forward to 2003, the company gave the world Aeriflex 235. This was a unique camera as it took inspiration from dolphins. The unique shape of the camera granted it improved ergonomics and the ability to work underwater. In the same year, AeriScan was released, cutting down the entire post-process workflow. It made reading and writing data and the archival process easy, efficient, and affordable. Soon it was time for Airy to step into the digital cinema universe. But instead of jumping the gun, they wanted to test the water. Hence, they came out with the Airy Flex D20, a digital cinema camera only for rentals. The year that followed, the company introduced its last 15mm camera, the Airy Flex 416. It was an amalgamation of Airy Cam's tech, the aesthetic of 235, and the size of 16SR. After that, however, it was time for Airy to move from the analog days to the digital future. So, they released the D21, another Cine camera for rentals only. However, they specified it for TV production to safeguard the film market. Shortly, 56 units were available in only 13 rental houses worldwide. In 2010, the legendary Airy Alexa was introduced to the world. It checked so many boxes, which gave the camera its legendary status. It followed why change it if it's not broken strategy. Alexa came in a rugged body with a familiar menu, button placement and the images were reminiscent of the Airy cam. These combinations made it a huge success. Alexa paved the path for Airy to move from analog to digital. It promised detailed, uncompressed 4K footage for HD television. Besides TV production, this camera was used in many major film production. Fast forward to 2012, August Arnold sold his part of the share, and an heir of Ronald Richter bought it, and now they are the owner of the company. In 2014, the company introduced its rental services and released the Alexa 65. This 65mm camera has been used more than any other 65mm. After 100 years since its inception, it can be said that the founder's dream came true. They are now involved in everything related to cinema and the cinematic process, from lights, cameras, and accessories. The company offers more service through their rental services. Lastly, Airy Media is helping creatives with every aspect of post-processing. Over the years, film and cinema have changed, from aesthetics to techniques. However, Airy has always provided tools to the creatives to make cinematography easy and fun, giving them the creative freedom to say their story the way they want. Airy isn't stopping anytime soon. Their adventure will continue as long as cinema and cinematography exist. So that's the history of Airy. It's apparent why their camera and ecosystem means so much to Hollywood. Their name is synonymous with cinema and cinematography. What do you think? Let us know in the comments down below.